So let's talk um, gloves, right? You can order them online, they're pretty easy. Most pilots, um, officers, you're gonna want a nice set of gauntleted gloves, right? These aren't like most gloves. Uh, the ones you buy online um, for, for most customers, they're these um, thick, you know, leather gloves. They're nice. You can't really do anything with them. Mine, I absolutely love, because I don't lose any dexterity. I can I can take pictures. I can do everything I would normally do with with gloves, um, and they're super inexpensive. Let me show you how I made mine. I'll go over a couple of quick things. First thing we're gonna do. These gloves I picked up at Menards. Any home improvement store will have leather gloves especially near the winter they fit they're comfortable i don't really they're a bit looser uh, than i want but they were on sale for 4.99 so i also went to goodwill and picked up a leather jacket i'm pretty sure you can see where this is going so we're going to cut up the rest of I've, I've, that's exactly how i made these and these are comfortable inexpensive the jacket i think was also around 4.99 so all together, we're looking at about 10 bucks in material. It's hard to beat that. A little bit of time, well, that's easy. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is take the elastic off of these, and then we're gonna do some measurements. Let me bring in so you can see what I'm seeing, and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, elastic, super easy to take off. It's just two stitches. So I'm just gonna take a razor blade and uh, take the elastic off. That's all there is to it, really. A lot of people overcomplicate this stuff. As you can tell from my wind chimes, it's a breezy day outside. should probably be using a sharper, a sharper blade, but you know. It's what I got, it's what I got. I don't feel like resetting everything. So I'm just going to carefully take the uh, elastic off of both pieces. So now we're going to take some quick measurements. Um, get it in half. It doesn't have to perfectly line up because there's an extra piece here and it folds over. So we want it as close to half as possible. Taking the elastic off will make everything smooth. So we're going to measure, which is four and a half. So I want five and a half because we have half an inch seam allowance on each side. I think I wanted seven and a half up and down. So that's how long I want the cuff to be. Seven and a half, roughly, to about there. So it'd actually be that long. And then we're gonna go, I don't know. Last time I went eight. Eight sounds good. This would be eight and a half inches on the paper. So that actually makes things pretty easy. Since I know the width is gonna be eight and a half, Just fold it in half. Have a nice center point. I know I want this to be seven and a half, the, the length. So five and a half is two and three quarters. A uh, real easy, quick, quick way to, to do a half. It's just to fold your tape measure over. That gives you two and three quarters. I like to think as little as possible. So five and a half. I'm gonna make this length seven and a quarter, not seven and a half. Um, that way I've got kind of a curve, a little more of a curve. And this is just gonna slightly arc and slightly arc. So that's our pattern. I need four of these because they get stitched to each other and then, uh, and then on the top. Sewing isn't difficult. Showing someone how to sew is difficult. So, I put you as close to where I can, or where I would be, where you here as I can. I'm doing a half inch seam allowance. 
I tend to start um, about a half inch away from the edge, back stitch and then forward. It's been a while since I've sewn. I'm going to double check everything, make sure all my measurements are right. That is indeed a half inch. No. Yeah, that's a half inch seam allowance. All right. Just hold the ends, let the machine do all the work. It's a little off the edge, but hey, whatever. Remember, it's just costuming. Does not have to be perfect. And this is the last side stitch. Make sure everything's lined up right. Editing Hawk hates it when I mumble to myself. Because you can't just speed past that. Now I'm going to cut everything flush because I've got a couple edges that are a little bigger than the rest. So now all we do is take the glove exactly as it is, slip it in there, and then stitch all the way around. I'm not sure, I think I want to cut it right where this fold is. So if you can see the stitch line, I want to cut right there and go straight across. That way that's my half inch stitch mark. Trying to stitch a nice even edge, always easier than fighting with everything else. Now I could stop and line everything up, make sure I get the right sides to the right sides and all that jazz. I'm not gonna, but I could. So I'm just gonna fold these down, stitch all the way across. I tend to start at the outside seam just because I like uh, knowing that edge lines up the best because the thumb edge tends to, to drift a bit. The thumbs are rarely thumb edges, right? Some of them don't even have edge, so if you keep this lined up, it just looks a little neater. Well, that was stupid. I want it all the way that way. There we go. Got my math backwards for a minute. Only move a little at a time. Make sure everything is nice and taut, and stitch. When I get to the outside, I want to make sure that the uh, two edges are folded open. That just makes it lay nicer. My machine does not like sewing through multiple layers of leather, so it was unhappy with me a second ago. So on my first set, I folded everything back up, put a stitch line in here to make everything all nice and smooth, and in the end I realized I didn't need it. It didn't really matter, because it lays just fine without it. So what I'm going to do is fold this edge over by about half inch, half of an inch, and then stitch that down as well. Um, the edge of my foot is half an inch. So that lets me know about how big to make everything. I could put marks. I measure the beginning. I measure the end. And in the end, it doesn't really matter. 
I want it just, just under the size of my foot and move my needle over a touch. This would be a great place to put a decorative stitch if you wanted, you know, your TIE Pilot or um, X-Wing Pilot or anything like that to be all fancy. Perfect spot for it. Shove the glove in. It's way easier than trying to fight with it. So they do make this tape you can put down. Most professionals who, who do like upholstery use it. They swear by it. It's great stuff. It's a pressure tape like um, contact cement is kind of a pressure thing. I don't have any. But you know would make this job way easier. If you look at a jacket, like some of them, I guess this one doesn't, have a tape in there. So now if I was really worried about it, I could put a second stitch in along the top. I, I'm obviously not, because I'm not. There it is. Not too shabby. There is the completed glove, right? I absolutely love how this one looks. Um, my original ones have a little bit of stitching on them on the top, which I kind of like, and they are a little tighter, but this is going in my pilot bin and these are going to be my pilot gloves. These are my officer gloves, right? With everything on my officer, the, the tight fan, these, these look great. On my pilot, everything's a little looser, a little more comfortable, and I think these, this one's going to be perfect. All together, it was about 10 bucks to make this, right? And took me maybe 15 minutes. Um, it's not not difficult to do. Um, it's super quick, easy to make. Give it a shot. If you're making a, a pilot of any kind or a, a officer or anything that needs gloves, fast, easy. Now I got another one to make. So uh, see you next time.